The many evictions of the slum dwelling population from Chennai have not been carried out in a humane manner. In the large resettled colonies, the evicted population continues to suffer from lack of employment, from lack of proper transportation facilities, and even from limited infrastructure. The draft policy on resettlement and rehabilitation little addresses these concerns and has many flaws. That is going to provide relief to, to the urban poor. That is not the objective of this policy. And as well as uh, this is not about uh, the lower middle class people who are already suffering because of a huge uh, uh, rising rent issues. So th those people are not covered. So this is not a housing policy. This is very clear that this is a policy for uh, evicting people. About the forceful eviction, this policy is only talking about involuntary resettlement, right? People who do not want to uh, leave from the place, so we are going to forcefully evict them. In that, this policy starts with, in a good note, that people should be resettled in a fair and humane manner in a dignified way. That's what the policy says. And the policy also mentions that, uh, uh, quite ironically, that the police force will be used during the resettlement process. If you actually look at, in the past, uh, how the resettlement has happened, even the very recent resettlement that happened in uh, uh, Indranagar, which is next to the uh, place, uh, it's called Tivitudal in Chennai, which is closer to the Mount Road region. They were resettled because uh, uh, it is claimed that they are living uh, within the Kuvam River. They said that they have encroached the Kuvam River. So the CR of the Kuvam River Restoration Department has uh, implemented this resettlement. And if you actually look at that, there are photos and videos. There is a huge force of pullers. It's like an army, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, people are forcefully evicted. And uh, they are like uh, uh, manhandled and they are thrown in a truck. And uh, uh, this is how resettlement happens. So the first thing that we have to say is that in this policy, it has to be clearly mentioned, there won't be any use of violence. There is a distinction between using police force and using violence through a uh, police. Right, so it should be clearly mentioned there will not be any kind of violence that, that is uh, that will be used. Why do we say that? We say that because, as we have already mentioned, they have three years time. You you come up with the resettlement plan. You include the people who are being affected in the resettlement committee and hear their queries, and then implement the resettlement. So you have three years time to convince the people that, see, this is not a process of resettlement. This is not just the process of evicting you from the place where you're living. This is more of a process of rehabilitation. This is going to increase your standard of living. You have to provide the confidence to people. In order to provide that confidence, you have to have all the measures that will actually increase the standard of living. And it will be truly a rehabilitation policy. But such things are not part of this policy. Therefore, the first thing you have to say is that clearly mention violence will not be part of this resettlement process. So that's not there. And if, if there is going to be violence, then there is nothing fair, there is nothing humane, and there is nothing dignified about this process. So that is the a major problem with this policy. And there are uh, uh, several other issues which does not really cover the well-being of the people. And there are several loopholes in the policy uh, that really does not uh, uh, provide any kind of rehabilitation to these people. This draft policy was released within six months since the new government took over. It is a small 17-page document and only three weeks were given to provide feedback on it. The entire process of formulating and implementing the policy is done in a hasty manner and the livelihood of the resettled population is not being prioritized. How could the policy be more friendly towards the urban poor? The place where the people will be evicted, that's the place where the, uh, the resettlement is going to happen. From that place, 
uh, urban areas should not be uh, 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 urban area should not be more than 30 minutes of travel that's what the uh, draft policy says so from the place where the people are being resettled they should be able to reach the nearest urban area within 30 minutes via bus or train see this is completely ambiguous what is the urban area what do you mean by urban area as i said tamil nadu is one of uh, the highly urbanized states in uh, India, almost 60 percentage is urbanized. So what is urban area? Uh, do you mean urban area is a municipality or a greater municipality like Chennai? Or is it uh, there are several smart cities that are coming up and nobody knows what a smart city is. So what is an urban area? So be clear about that. Second, do not mention time. See, time is variable. See, uh, what might take 30 minutes today may take only 20 minutes tomorrow so because of some infrastructural developments. Uh, so do not mention time. For example, uh, we have Perimbakam today. This goes with the urban, urban area ambiguity. Perimbakam resettlement colony. For, for many people think Perimbakam is part of the city, but Perimbakam in Chennai is not part of the Chennai corporation. It is a, uh, it is a village panchayat, right? Uh, so from Perimbakam, you can come to the uh, Sholinganallur, which is the last uh, boundary of Chennai in that region. You can come to Perimbaka, you can come to Sholinganallur in 10 20 minutes. But from where the people were evicted, if they have to travel that distance, it will take at least one hour 40 minutes. Now, it is very much possible in the next few years, Perimbaka may be included in the Chennai Corporation region because the city is also continuously expanding, right? City is not a static thing. And the city's governance boundary is not a static thing. See, we had a Chennai corporation. Now we have a greater Chennai corporation. Now they are going to make Tambaram and municipality. Then it becomes uh, then it becomes uh, urban area, right? So what is urban area is also something uh, that is changing to the whims and fancies of the government. So now you can put them in somewhere near Kelambakam. From Kelambakam, possibly you can come to Perimbakam in 30 minutes. So this can keep on going. So what we are saying is that do not mention time. Instead of that, mention that people will be resettled within three or five kilometers from the place where they are living right now, from the place where they are being evicted. So once you say that, these ambiguities, uh, these ambiguities will go away. Because if it's going to be three or five kilometers, then it has to be within the Chennai city or any other city that we are going to talk about, right? And the, the, the possibility of whether it's a municipality, whether it's a smart city, those ambiguities will also go away. So mention the distance. Do not mention the time. That is the first thing. And they also say that uh, we should uh, take into consideration that... Uh, uh, employment opportunities are there in the place where they are being resettled. So these things are not really clear because uh, if you're going to put 2,000, 3,000 people in a place in one day, how there will be employment opportunities? Do we have the capacity of uh, creating 3,000 employment in, in no time? No, that's not a possibility. So we have to think through those. Uh, that's the problem with this policy. The entire document is just 17 pages. Say, can you really uh, come up with a rehabilitation policy document, uh, which is just 17 pages? It is not possible. So this, this policy, if you look at it, it, it just has those, uh, uh, those points which will help them to evict rather than something that will help them to rehabilitate uh, the people who are being evicted. See, so that is one problem. The second problem with this uh, uh, policy is that about the identification of land. See, what they say is that they have to identify a land which is not, uh, which is environment friendly, where you do not have any other issues and uh, which does not have uh, any uh, uh, possibilities of uh, natural calamities. So such uh, zoning related issues. The problem is, all these things are in the hands of the government. See, tomorrow, the government can uh, rezone an area which was uh, in the past considered to be environmentally hazardous. They can just rezone the area and say that this is environment friendly. 
something that was considered to be uh, as an uh, area which is prone to natural calamity they can simply rezone and say that this is not uh, a region the where the natural calamity happened see to give you one simple example is that uh, people were evicted within the chennai city in 2016 during the december floods etc et during that time uh, because they said these regions are prone to floods so we have to resettle them so where did they resettle they resettled them in perumbakkam now if you talk to the residents of perumbakkam they will tell even if there is a, a, a mildly heavy rain uh water will be clogged up till the first floor or second floor of perumbakkam it is quite possible so that is already in a, a, a area which is prone to natural calamity and now they have built a uh, 6000 households in ernavu which is both a uh, 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 flood prone area and also have environmentally hazardous uh, issues over there so so what is that uh, identification of land with these uh, uh, notions of environmental hazards natural calamity then what we say is that the government should come up with a set of uh, with a with a list of lands where people can be evicted they should release that uh, list prior a prior you should release that list at least 5 years once 10 years once release that list and then do the eviction because uh, and and once you release that list get the uh, comments from the civil society get the comments from the uh, academics and the other social activists and environmental experts uh, it should not be just the government agency it cannot be the environmental agency of the government itself because you cannot audit uh, your own list right there should be a kind of a social audit so that is not there uh, in this uh, entire uh, uh, in this entire uh, draft policy so there is Because there are problems like this, and as I already mentioned, the size of the settlement. Mention the size of the settlement. Do not come up with thirty uh, thousand households and forty thousand households. And the other question is that uh, the maintenance. See, we have to understand that we are talking about people who do not have the economic capacity to pay any kind of rent. that's why these people are living in the places which are next to kuvam uh, river which is not a river it's not like a river anymore it's more like a sewage dump and in the places which is not something that any uh, human being who want to live a, a peaceful life would want to live in right the reason that they are living in is not because they are happy to be there because they do not have a choice because they don't have the money to pay rent right so you are evicting such people after evicting such people in the document if you see who is responsible for the maintenance of the house it becomes these people who are responsible for the maintenance of the house uh, for instance in perumbakkam they say they collect around 750 rupees per household for maintenance but even after that uh, some of the basic maintenance like water lift the people have to spend out of their own pocket so the maintenance should be done by the government if not this becomes a classic case of government withdrawing from providing public services so so these problems needs to be addressed and i think the government have not really uh, taken the experience uh, from kannaginagar and perumbakkam regions you know to come up with a better plan so because kannaginagar perumbakkam chemmangeri these regions people have continuously expressed uh, their queries to the government and the problems that that is there like drug abuse and the women safety children safety these are major concerns in both perumbakkam and uh, uh, kanaganagar so these questions have not been addressed in this draft policy therefore the past experience is not included in the policy